Hey everyone, my name is Joseph. Some of you might know me as Fluke, and I am one of the founders of Winhanced. Today, I want to walk you through what exactly Winhanced is and what you can expect if you download the software as it exists today, which is an early access release number 1.013. So let's go ahead and launch it and let's get into it. All right, so the way that I like to identify Winhance is in two parts. The first part is our unified library. The second is our overlay. Let's start with the unified library for that's the simplest one to explain. The goal of Winhance is to try to make the Windows experience as seamless as possible for everyone. So we wanna take a lot of the manual setup that everybody has to do today and try to automate as much of that process as possible and try to make it look as beautiful as possible. So our unified library is designed with that philosophy in mind. In, current, um, in the current release, uh, the current active tabs that we have is just the library tab and your uh, recent games. But we plan on adding stuff to the what's new section and hopefully in the future potentially Discord integration as well, which would be awesome. But let's talk about the library itself. When you first install Winhance, it's going to take some time in the beginning on that splash screen that you just saw. And on that splash screen, it's actually behind the scenes taking a look at your computer, looking for any installed Steam games and any installed Xbox Game Pass games. It's then adding that to this unified library with a badge next to the indicator to let you know which library it came from. This is so that if you go into the library view, you can see the number of games that you have installed or even filter out based on the library of games that you're specifically looking for. As you can see, I'm only playing Avowed on Game Pass right now. But I have a ton of games on Steam that I'm playing. Or you can just sort it by everything, to be honest. So, up at the top, you have your recent game carousel. Um, as you play games, essentially, the most recent game that you have will show up on the top left, and you can scroll through 10 games um, 10 of your most recent games, essentially. Additionally, within this unified library, you have a game details page. So if I were to open up a Vout here, it pro it's providing me the game details, it's providing me the cover art, uh, the banner art, and it's even letting me know how much time I've played in the game since I've started playing it on Winhanced. Additionally, you'll see a couple of sections here for achievements, main story, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Those are all future integrations that we're planning with uh, pulling in achievements from hopefully Xbox and Steam, as well as integration with sites like How Long to Beat, so that you can get an understanding of how long it's going to take you to beat that title that's been sitting in your backlog forever. So, that is the library tab. Next, let's talk about the meat and potatoes of Winhance and that's our overlay. So here we are loading up a Vald, and this gives me ample time to really talk about the goal of overlay. So if I push the armor crate button on my specific Ally X, for other folks it might be the Legion R key or other device specific keys as we build out more support in the future, it pulls up our overlay screen. And since I have a game launched, it also pulls up the game detail screen, as you can see indicated by the game's title in the bottom left corner and the game's banner art. Now, there's a, there's a lot of options here. Um, I will say that the middle three are currently not accessible, but they are in this build so that you can get a taste for what we're trying to do in the future. Uh, what, is, what is here, though, is the ability to resume a game and exit a game, which I'll show you a little bit later. If you hit RB, you also are able to access our controller remapping view. Within the current release of Winhanced, we don't currently allow mapping of the back buttons um, as, we are, as not all devices support them and we want to make sure we're building out support for our core devices before adding in device specific features. But that is something that's on our roadmap and something we want to add into the future. What is here though, is you have the ability to select any of the main primary buttons here and remap them. So we could go over here to like right bumper as an example and see an Xbox controller come up. This allows me um, specifically for the MSI, and I believe this is also going to apply for Legion Go and other devices as well. You have the ability to map both a primary and a secondary function. The secondary function will not work until we add in the support to 
set something as a secondary button, but that's the intention there. And that's why you see those two tabs, which you can toggle between. But within this controller remapping, um, what I'm going to hit, what you can see is you have the ability to, as an example, we're currently on the right bumper. I can select like the A button if I want to do like a bumper jumper situation. And that is allowing me to um, now use the right bumper essentially as the A key. But I'm going to map it back to the right bumper for now. Next, let's talk about the command center. So, the command center is in the very early stages, but there's a lot of stuff we want to do with it, but there is already a lot of stuff here. Number one, we have built in predefined uh, device performance profiles that are specific to the device that you are using, so you can't go above your max TDP. But we are thinking about adding in manual TDP control for you modders out there who have had the ability to cool your system better than what the default stock uh, experience is like. But here's what we can go ahead and talk about. Um, we have silent, balance, performance, and this auto feature, which you can see I currently have active because I pretty much only play with this feature active now because it's great. Um, auto or smart uh, TDP profile essentially allows you to set your frame rate limit. Um, in my case, I also lock my, free re my refresh rate to 60 because it's better battery. And behind the scenes, or your device is actually going to go to work for you um, in monitoring your performance in game and then t slightly tweaking your TDPs out your TDP output in order to try to get you that frame rate. It's a way of one having more consistent frame rates as well as preserving battery because you're not pumping out more energy than is necessary in those low easy to handle like indie games as an example. Additionally within here, you meant, I mentioned it already, but we also have the option for frame rate limiting. Um, this is using RTSS, and you have the ability at in this current build to li limit to 60, 40, or 30 if you set it to the 60 hertz profile, or if your device supports 120 hertz, you have the ability to map it to 120, 180. And we are looking to add um, additional frame rate limits and even the ability to have a custom toggle in the future. I already mentioned that you can you can actually tweak your refresh rate here as well. You also have the ability within here to set your resolution. So if the, your, your device can't quite push that game at 1080p, you can change it uh, very easily on the fly here. You also have our exit button. So if you decide you need, don't, you don't want to be inside of Winhance anymore, you want to close it, this is how you exit it. And then obviously, um, as you can see by this giant bar here on the right hand side, you can come in here and adjust the brightness. This isn't perfect yet. Um, because we still need to build in touch support as well as the ability to uh, navigate the entire UI using your joysticks because right now it's just uh, D-pad base. But all of these are definitely things to come in the, in the future. And those are the tabs that we have currently available. The last thing I want to actually call out here while you're in a game before we exit it is if, if you look in the top left, you also have uh, FPS monitoring. So when you're in game, uh, you can access your overlay at any time. Uh, your your battery percentage and things like that will also, and time will also show up for you to see. Um, but in the top left corner, you can also monitor your frame rate. There's a lot more tabs here on the bottom, um, which is once again, hints at ideas of, for features to come in the future. But the last thing I want to call out here is um, one of my favorites, and that's the ability that within the overlay, you can navigate down to this taskbar, and you actually now have the ability to swap between any of your ta any, any tasks and even launch them. So as an example, we'll go to, we'll go, we will launch my, my browser of choice, which is Zen. And when I launch that, you can see that the overlay is still open, but I now have, I am now currently in my browser. So I can look up guides, do some research, put on a playlist while I'm playing the game. But at any time, I can still go back in to my game. So those are just some of the key things that we are currently, we currently have and are testing with uh, Winhanced in its current release format in early access. We have tons of features to come and I'm really excited to have you all along for the ride. So if there's any questions that you have after watching this video or if you just want to give a suggestion, definitely uh, reach out to me in the designated channels within the Discord server. Um, by the way, if you're not a part of our Discord server, highly recommend um, because that's where a lot of our, that's where we're announcing all of our updates, that's where the conversation's happening, and that's also where we are providing support if you're having issues with Winhanced in this early access period. 
All right, y'all. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next update.